Wakame is an edible seaweed, yet it's been identified among the most invasive aquatic species on our planet. In one European country, the power generation industry spends more than $10 million annually trying to stop the Australian tubeworm clogging up cooling water intakes. These are just two examples of an insidious problem that's occurring all over the world. Invasive aquatic species introduced by biofouling. But how does it happen? When surfaces and structures are exposed to the sea, aquatic organisms, some of them invasive, can build up rapidly. Left untreated, they can have severe consequences. Once introduced, invasive aquatic species are almost impossible to eradicate, and they can pose a major threat to biodiversity and destroy healthy marine ecosystems. They can damage human health and have a negative effect on tourism. And dealing with invasive species can cost huge sums of money. A range of key maritime sectors and activities, including shipping, oil and gas, renewable ocean energy, recreational boating, deep sea mining, aquaculture and fisheries, can be affected by biofouling and spread aquatic invasive species. And biofouling on ships can also increase hull resistance, resulting in higher fuel consumption and more greenhouse gas emissions. But there is a solution. A global project led by the International Maritime Organization has been set up to tackle this problem head-on. Backed by the Global Environment Facility and the UN Development Programme, IMO's Glow Fouling Partnerships is bringing together stakeholders from all over the world to develop and share solutions to biofouling. Working closely with pioneering countries, industry and institutional partners, Glow Fouling Partnerships will raise awareness, foster research and development, share best practices, including IMO's own biofouling guidelines, and help promote technical solutions. So if you want to help protect biodiversity and be a part of the global solution, see how the Glow Fouling Partnerships project can help you.